Today, we are witnessing a turning point in the destiny of mankind. We are seeing history unfold before our very eyes. We are witnessing the end of an era and the dawning of a new one. What can we expect in the coming months or the coming years? If the year 2020 has taught us anything, we can expect the unexpected. But is it really that unexpected? Can we look for clues? Can we read between the lines? Are there hints that might suggest what is coming around the corner? Is this all just part of a plan that has been in motion for a very long time? Those who have eyes to see will have noticed some of these clues along the way. Dr. Gregory H. Stanton, a former professor at George Mason University in Fairfax, Virginia, specializes in genocide studies and prevention. He is the founder and president of Genocide Watch, which, according to their website, exists to predict, prevent, stop, and punish genocide and other forms of mass murder. Their purpose is to build an international movement to prevent and stop genocide. Dr. Stanton developed the 10 stages of genocide, which describes the process to which a genocide develops. Dr. Stanton points out that these stages may occur simultaneously or sometimes in a nonlinear fashion. The earlier in the continuum this activity is recognized, the more likely intervention is possible. I went in and saw President Javier Imana. He thanked me for the work that I was doing and so forth. It was a very cordial visit. And then at the end, I brought up the ID cards. And I said, you know, these ID cards could be used for genocide. I said, if you let things keep going as they're currently going, you are going to have a genocide within five years. The 10 stages are as follows. The first stage of genocide is classification. All cultures have categories to distinguish people into us and them by ethnicity, race, religion, or nationality, or more recently, health status. German and Jew, Hutu and Tutsi, healthy and sick, Bipolar societies that lack mixed categories, such as Rwanda and Burundi, are the most likely to have genocide. The second stage of genocide is symbolization. Names and symbols are given as classification. People are given names and are distinguished by colors or dress. Symbols are applied to members of these groups. Classification and symbolization are universally human and do not necessarily result in genocide, unless they lead to dehumanization. When combined with hatred, symbols may be used to single out and target groups with hate. Examples of this are the yellow star for Jews under Nazi rule, or the blue scarf for people from the Eastern Zone in Khmer Rouge, Cambodia. The third stage of genocide is discrimination. A dominant group uses law, custom, and political power to deny the rights of other groups. The powerless group may not be afforded full civil rights, voting rights, or their rights are taken away. The dominant group is driven by an exclusionary ideology that would deprive less powerful groups of their rights. 
the ideology advocates monopolization or expansion of power by the dominant groups. It legitimizes the victimization of weaker groups. The fourth stage of genocide is dehumanization. One group denies the humanity of the other group. Members of it are equated with animals, vermin, insects, or diseases. Dehumanization overcomes the normal human revulsion against murder. At this stage, hate propaganda in print and on hate radio is used to vilify the victim group. The majority group is taught to regard the other group as less than human and even alien to their society. They are indoctrinated to believe that we are better off without them. The powerless group can become so depersonalized that they are actually given numbers rather than names. As Jews were in the death camps. They are equated with filth, impurity, and immorality. Hate speech fills the propaganda of official radio, newspapers, and speeches. The fifth stage of genocide is organization. Genocide is always organized, usually by the state, often using militias to provide deniability. Sometimes organization is informal. States organize secret police to spy on, arrest, torture, and murder people suspected of opposition to political leaders. The sixth stage of genocide is polarization. Extremists drive the groups apart. Hate groups broadcast polarizing propaganda. Motivations for targeting a group are indoctrinated through mass media. Extremist terrorism targets moderates, intimidating and silencing the center. Moderates from the perpetrator's own group are most able to stop genocide who are the first to be arrested and killed. Leaders in targeted groups are the next to be arrested and murdered. The terrorist Trump must be defeated, must be destroyed, must be devoured at the ballot box. And then he and his enablers and his supporters and his collaborators and the Mike Lees and the William Barrs and the Sean Hannity's and the Mike Pence's and the Rudy Giuliani's and the Kyle Rittenhouse's and the Amy Coney Barrett's must be prosecuted and convicted and removed from our society while we try to rebuild it the dominant group passes emergency laws or decrees that grants them total power over the targeted group. The laws erode fundamental civil rights and liberties. Targeted groups are disarmed to make them incapable of self-defense and to ensure that the dominant group has total control. The seventh stage of genocide is preparation. Plans are made for genocidal killings. National or perpetrator group leaders plan the final solution to the Jewish, Armenian, Tutsi, or other targeted group question. They often use euphemisms to cloak their intentions, such as referring to their goals as ethnic cleansing, purification, the Great Reset, They build armies, buy weapons, and train their troops and militias. They indoctrinate the populace with fear of the victim group. Leaders often claim that if we don't kill them, they will kill us, disguising genocide as self-defense. Acts of genocide are disguised as counterinsurgency if there is an ongoing armed conflict or civil war. There is a sudden increase in inflammatory rhetoric and hate propaganda with the objective of creating fear of the other group.
the eighth stage of genocide is persecution. Victims are identified and separated out because of their ethnic or religious identity. Could we now be seeing persecution based on political affiliation or health status? Anyone buy the wings? You go through all the Republican voters and Homeland Security will take their children and we'll put them into re education camps. Amen. I brought up the subject of what's going to happen after we take over the government. Uh, you know, we, we become responsible then for administrating, you know, 250 million people. And there was no answers. No one had given any thought to economics. How are you going to clothe and feed these people? The only thing that I could get was that they expected that the Cubans and the North Vietnamese and the Chinese and the Russians would all want to occupy different portions of the United States. They also believed that their immediate responsibility would be to protect against what they called the counter-revolution. And uh, they felt that this counter-revolution could best be guarded against by creating and establishing re-education centers in the Southwest. Uh, where we would take all the people who needed to be re-educated into the new way of thinking and teach them how things were going to be. I ask, well, what is going to happen to those people that we can't re-educate, that are die-hard cap capitalists? And the reply was that they'd have to be eliminated. And when I pursued this further, they estimated that they would have to eliminate 25 million people in these re-education centers. And when I say eliminate, I mean kill 25 million people. I want you to imagine sitting in a room with 25 people, most of which have graduate degrees from Columbia and other well-known educational centers, and hear them figuring out the logistics for the elimination of 25 million people. And they were dead serious. Death lists are drawn up. Their property is often expropriated. Sometimes they're even segregated into ghettos, deported into concentration camps, or confined to a famine-struck region and starved. They are deliberately deprived of resources such as water or food in order to slowly destroy them. the victim group's basic human rights become systematically abused. Genocidal massacres begin. They are acts of genocide because they intentionally destroy part of a group. The perpetrators watch for whether such massacres meet any international reaction. If not, they realize that the international community will again be bystanders and permit another genocide. The ninth stage of genocide is extermination. Extermination begins and quickly becomes the mass killing legally called genocide. It is extermination to the killers because they do not believe their victims to be fully human. When it is sponsored by the state, the armed forces often work with militias to do the killing. Acts of genocide demonstrate how dehumanized the victims have become. Already dead bodies are dismembered. Rape is used as a tool of war to genetically alter and eradicate the other group. Destruction of cultural and religious property is employed to annihilate the group's existence from history. 
mass rapes of women and girls have become a characteristic of all modern genocides. In some genocide, all men of fighting age are murdered. In total genocides, all the members of the targeted group are exterminated. The tenth stage of genocide is denial. Denial is the final stage that lasts throughout and always follows genocide. It is among the surest indicators of further genocidal massacres. History is rewritten to wash away the crimes. The perpetrators of genocide dig up the mass graves, burn the bodies, try to cover up the evidence, and intimidate the witnesses. They deny that they commit any crimes and often blame what happened on the victims. They block investigations of the crimes and continue to govern until driven from power by force when they flee into exile. There they remain with impunity like Pol Pot or Idi Amin, unless they are captured and a tribunal is established to try them. These are the most difficult topics to discuss. Some would say we are crazy for thinking this way or making these assumptions. Understand that we are not comparing having to wear a mask in a store or the persecution of freedom-loving people worldwide with the Holocaust. We are simply pointing out that history is repeating itself before our very eyes. If we do not understand history, we are doomed to repeat it. Many people still think that the lockdowns and removal of civil liberties are about controlling a virus. Many do not see the division in the world being deliberate. Genocide in the first world is something many consider to be impossible. If our correlation between the events in the world today are actually leading to genocide, is it too late to turn the ship around? <laughs>